We're going to measure motion today using a picative motion sensor and a Raspberry Pi. We'll connect these two together and run some example code to measure linear acceleration and also angular rotation. To follow along, you'll need a Raspberry Pi running like a desktop computer. I'm using a Raspberry Pi 4 Model B today, a Picadev motion sensor and adapter for Raspberry Pi, and a Picadev cable. 100 millimeters or longer is best for Raspberry Pi projects. Today, I'm using a 500 millimeter Picadev cable. If you need help setting your Pi up as a desktop computer, follow our Raspberry Pi for Beginners workshop. I've connected my motion sensor to my Pi using the adapter and cable, and I've also mounted everything on a Picadev platform to keep it stable for this tutorial. Follow the Picadev connection guide if you need some more help. I'm now ready to connect my monitor, Ethernet and power, and power on. In the article for this tutorial, find the download example script section, and right click that main.py link, and select save as. I'm going to save that to a folder called picadev in my home directory. And I'm just going to call this motion to give it some context. Double click motion to open it up in Thonny. If it doesn't open in Thonny, you can always open Thonny from the programming menu, Thonny IDE. And let's just make sure we have picadev installed correctly. Go to tools, manage packages, and search for picadev with two eyes. P-I-I-C-O-D-E-V, hit enter. There's our result. And just install or upgrade if necessary. With PicoDev installed and our example script downloaded, we're actually ready to go. You can just click that green run current script button and immediately we have acceleration data streaming into the shell. So it's quite hard to read because it zips by pretty quickly, but we have X, Y, and Z acceleration data streaming up the shell. I'll open up the plotter though, because that's a little more interesting to look at. There's three lines being plotted, one each for X, Y, and Z. And we can see that the Z axis here is at about 10 meters per second squared, which makes sense. Uh, gravity is about 9.8 meters per second squared. If I roll the sensor to the left, we can see that the X acceleration goes to positive 10 meters per second squared, and the Z has fallen off to zero. We can read the axis legends off the motion sensor itself. We have some arrows here for X, Y, and Z. And we can see that positive X is pointing in this direction. That's the X acceleration arrow. So if we shove the sensor to the right, I can see that there's a, there's a positive spike in that blue X acceleration because we're shoving it in the positive X acceleration direction. Interestingly, there's a mirroring negative pulse. And that kind of makes sense if you think about it. To shove it to the right, we have to accelerate in the positive X, but then to come to a stop, we have to decelerate, which is the same as accelerating in the negative X. Doing this on the bench, it's quite hard to just isolate one axis. Any small movement is picked up. We can do the same again in the Z axis. I can create a positive then negative Z acceleration. And if I shove the sensor forward, I can create those pulses in the Y axis as well. Let's stop the script and have a look at what's going on. In the first line, we import the driver for the motion sensor, and we also import a function to create a delay, which is sleep. Then we call the motion sensor initialization function, and we're gonna call our motion sensor motion. There's an infinite loop, and we first read motion.readExcelData, which returns a dictionary, and that gets stored in Excel. Then to make the next lines a little bit easier, we get the X, Y, and Z entries in that dictionary and just store them to separate variables. That makes this print statement a little bit easier to read. In print, we print the X axis, followed by the acceleration in the X component, converted to a string for easy printing. And we repeat that with Y and with Z. Now there's a fair bit more going on here. If I comment out this print statement with Alt-3, we can go down to the gyroscope data block and uncomment that whole block with Alt-4. Now we'll demo the gyroscopes. Click Run, and now the shell is streaming gyro data, which is in degrees per second. Again, the plot is a little bit easier to look at than the raw data, but we can see we have about zero degrees per second. There will always be some offset with gyros, but we can see that they're all about zero. Now, if I perform the same experiment and stand the sensor up on its end by turning it to the left, 
that actually registers as a negative y angular velocity. And if I restore it back to the bench, that's a positive y angular velocity. Last time we did that, that affected the x acceleration. So what's going on here? Looking at our axis labels once again, we can see that the y-axis has the acceleration vector pointing this way. And by the right hand rule, if we point our thumb in that direction, our fingers will curl in the direction of positive y acceleration, which for me, that's rolling clockwise. So to stand the sensor up on its end, we're actually rolling it in the negative y direction. And then when we restore it flat, that is in the direction of our finger curl, which is positive y. So reading this z-axis label, that means that if I turn the sensor on the bench this way, that ought to be a positive z. Let's see if that works. There it is. And if I restore it, that should be a negative z. And again with x, if I point my thumb this way, fingers curl this way, I need to flip the device up, and that is a positive x angular velocity. Neat. Stop the script. We'll comment out this print statement. I'm going to skip over temperature and skip straight to g-force. So I'll uncomment these two lines, run the script again, and now we're reading just a single axis, and that's g-force. And we can see that the value is very close to one, which if you think about it, it makes sense. The, the sensor is currently motionless in Earth's gravity, and that should be one g. So if I accelerate the sensor in just about any direction, I can get that g-force to spike up. But what I think is most interesting is what happens if the sensor is in free fall. If I drop the sensor and catch it, we can see that that g-force value gets quite low. It actually approaches zero. Now, because we're only sampling 10 times per second, and there's quite a lot of information to print, where the sample probably isn't lining up right on that zero g. So this could be interesting if you have your sensor connected to a car and you're measuring the g-forces going around a corner, or if you're measuring free fall of some device and detecting the moment of free fall. That's pretty cool. So there you have it, performing a few motion measurements using the PicoDev motion sensor and a Raspberry Pi. If you make anything cool out of this starter project, we'd love for you to share it on the Core Electronics forums. That's also the best place if you have any technical questions. Until next time, thanks for watching.